Again, this is something I had no clue about, didn't know this as of three weeks ago, but the angle of the heel counter is different. We're going to shoe school, everybody, today. Getting back into running as soon as possible. In the meantime, I'm trying to educate myself as much as possible on, here we go, let's just do it, women's running shoes versus, I'll just grab old, old Nova Blast 2, and men's running shoes. As, you know, as I mentioned, I want to bring on more running shoe reviewers for the channel at some point, especially a lady out there, okay? I realize that, well, uh, I've known this, but over the last like two or three weeks, I've been doing a lot of research on the differences between men's and women's running shoes. Some things I had never heard of in my entire life. That's what we're talking about today. So here's uh, True Love's new Puma shoe. It's really the only, uh, well, one of the only lady shoes in the house as far as running is concerned. And there's the men's shoe, okay? So let's dive, actually, question of the day. What is one feature in your running shoes that you wish uh, running shoe companies paid more attention to? or improved upon, okay? Is it the heel counter? Is it the eyelet chain? Is it the durability? Is it the, the, is it the uh, toe box? Uh, is it the vamp? Is it the outsole? Oh my, it's endless options, okay? Is it, yeah, oh my, don't even get me started. That's the question of the day. Comment of the day first. I like this a lot. Here we go, Jamie. I'd never, I never, I don't know if I've ever done this. Jamie, this was great. We're at, whenever I retire a pair of running shoes, I save the laces if I like them. Brilliant. Uh, there is a difference, believe it or not, in running shoe laces from company to company. And some laces, you can just sense that they've put a little more thought and engineering. You think like it's a, it's a shoelace. What, you know, how special can it be? There's a big difference in shoelaces when you really start to get into that uh, overall, that lacing and that lockdown over the top of your foot. So Jamie, I love that. I then use them to replace laces I don't like. That's just, that's a tip of the day right there. Jamie, thank you so much for sharing that insight there. And also, um, I think, uh, well, I'll do my best, do my best, and also link to it at the end, the anatomy of running shoes. I made a vlog a while ago on what are the different components that go into running shoes, okay? The different materials used, et cetera, et cetera. I'll link, try to link to it down below in the description. Here we go, differences between men's and women's running shoes first of all you probably can guess this right out of the box is that women's most so okay last l-a-s-t it's the piece of often it's like a piece of plastic or it's a mold that running shoe companies use to form uh, they're the upper and the overall shoe around the heel counter. Here's a picture of a last right now. Okay, there it is. So that's what that's called a last. And different shoe companies have different lasts for their lineups. Okay, you know, obviously Ultra's lasts are going to be much different than Nike's lasts. Uh, very wide versus uh, you know most often a little narrower in the Nike lineup. So anyway. First of all, women's shoes have a wider forefoot, uh, yeah, forefoot, okay, and a narrower heel to match the anatomical, um, uh, con not consistencies, the anatomical makeup of most ladies' feet, so okay, feet, okay, which it's just different than men's, all right? So wider forefoot, narrower heel, heel for women's running shoes wanted to mention so keep that in mind as you're you know going to running shoe stores you know is your heel slipping at all and you might just want to ask the store owner or the person helping you you know i'm really looking for a last a shoe last that is a little narrower in the heel if your heel is slipping okay there you go uh this is interesting the width of running shoes this it, it gets complex and i don't know if it's universal here i'm talking you know yeah i don't know if this is universal actually let us know in the comments if you live in europe or africa or south america how you do your system Systems. But here we go. Both men's and women's running shoes are made in medium. Okay, that's kind of the standard. Wide and extra wide widths. Um, the actual widths and the letters used to designate the widths are different between the genders. Okay, so here we go. Look at this title on the screen right now. Men's widths are D for medium, 2E for wide, and 4E for extra wide. Okay, so kind of memorize these numbers and letters as you're going to shoe stores. Women's widths are B for medium, D for wide, and 2E for extra wide. I know it's a lot. It's, I'm just going to let, let it marinate on the screen for a minute, okay? Soak in those letters and numbers and try and um, mem memorize them. And again, it's a, it's a difference in the purchasing pro process at running shoe stores. The Q angle. Oh, man. 
This is something new, something I learned about in the last two to three weeks. And this is important for me to know about more so as again, we bring on some more sh uh, shoe reviewers to the channel. The Q angle, have you ever heard of the Q angle before? It's the angle of incidence uh, of the quad to the kneecap, okay? So because women generally have a little wider hips than men, they have a wider Q angle, which impacts how much the they, ought, not always, but uh, this is, there's a little bit of generalization happening here, but often how they are pronating through their foot strike, which will impact where companies will place uh, outsole rubber, the density of the outsole rubber, uh, whether, whether it's on the medial side or lateral side, and then also whether or not there's a, a roll bar uh, or, or, yeah, a roll bar or the density of the midsole foam on the medial side or lateral side of the shoe. I know that's a lot. Anyway, there's the Q angle, a little more explanation on the screen for you. Craziness, flex grooves carved into the forefoot of the outsole. These grooves will be significantly deeper on women's shoes. You might ask, why would that be? Why? So uh, flex grooves, I love flex grooves. Is there a shoe out here that has a good flex groove example? Maybe the 1080, no. Um, anyway, flex grooves are basically grooves under the forefoot to help your foot uh, flex, you know, through the foot strike and give you a little more push off power through that foot, uh, foot strike. Well, the flex grooves, not always, but often in certain running shoe companies are a little deeper to help the flex of the shoe because of simply the strength of a woman's foot. Okay, so to help the lady get through that foot strike to push off her, uh, better, uh, the flex grooves will just be a little more pronounced in ladies running shoes. Sound good? Okay, moving on. Midsoles, okay. Women, okay, and this is, you know, this is science, this is just science here, often have 15% less muscle through their lower body, through their legs, okay, uh, causing them to weigh less than men of comparable height and shoe size. Therefore, the this is amazing. I mean, it's a lot of, you just think you'd show up at a shoe store and you're like, I want this shoe. The amount of science behind that shoe is unbelievable, you know, for, it's amazing. So I'm just blown away by the science that goes into shoe, shoe, running shoe design. Therefore, the midsole in a woman's shoe is designed to sustain 15% less impact as each foot strikes the ground. Okay, does that make sense? So because women often, not always, but often have 15% uh, muscle, that means they're gonna weigh less with respect to the same height um, as, as you know, equal height as a man, and therefore that impacts uh, the density of the midsole foam. Unbelievable, all right? And yes, because guys are often, again, generalization, are a little bigger, a little heavier, um, they, will, they will place denser midsole cushioning in the men's lineup, which, wow, whoa, durometer alert. And last but not least, Again, this is something I had no clue about, didn't know this as of three weeks ago, but the angle of the heel counter is different between a men's running shoe and a women's running shoe. While both men and women have a tendency to strike the ground with their heel first, women do so at a much shallower angle than men, okay? This means upon the heel striking the ground, men's feet are pointed upward at a greater angle than women's, all right? I can't really demonstrate it, but if this is your heel, the men's angle of their foot is more more up in the air compared to women's. As a result, the heel bevel design varies between the two shoes. Men's shoes have a more angled, okay, whereas a men's version, I don't even, here we go, the Tempest, has a more angled heel to allow for their strike, while the heel of a women's shoe is flatter. So basically, in a men's shoe, the heel, if this is 90 degrees, uh, it's gonna bend in. I don't know what the exact degree is. That would be interesting to know, but wh how companies determine. So what What would be the, te oh, that would, ugh. I don't have the Tempest shoe in a women's version, but the men's will be angled in more compared to the ladies will be angled less based on the angle of the men's foot strike. Wow, okay, I don't know if that was interesting at all. That's today's vlog. I hope you learned a little something something. Again, go back, rewind, look at those titles again. Hope it helps as you're going into these running shoe stores and buying. And I'll, I'll say, I'm a seven and a half. I've, I've definitely uh, purchased women's running shoes 
because just out of necessity, this is way back, and this is probably four or five years ago, because they didn't have my size in a men's version. But I must say, I do notice a difference in, particularly in the feel of the width, you know, through the midfoot. And what are you gonna do? Like, it's not ideal. So there is a difference out there. So, but you know, um, if a running shoe rep at a store says, yeah, maybe you could try the men's version or maybe you could try the women's version. Just be a little skeptical because, again, running shoe companies should be developing and that'll be interesting to see how they impact racing shoes at some point because, you know, a lot of times it's unisex uh, design and sizing for uh, for racing shoes like carbon fiber plates and I don't know. The more I research, the more I realize there are major differences anatomically between men's uh, feet and women's feet and that impacts the shoes that we buy. Onward and upward to the anatomy running shoe vlog. Anatomy running shoe vlog if you want to learn more about running shoes. Right there, right there, right there. Onward. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.